Hello everybody, welcome back to the little reef. Um, I've had a few requests from my last video um, for people to showcase the 100 watt Nikru Hyper Reef light a bit more. So I thought I would uh, jump on and I'll do a video with this. I'll give you a bit of a close up look on the light. Um, some examples with setting up the programs, using the controller. Um, and stuff like that just to give a better idea in, in how it all works and my feedback and thoughts on the light and stuff like that um, so I hope you find this helpful but follow along and I will give you an idea of what it's all like okay so this is the controller um, it's pretty straightforward obviously you've got your directional arrows select and back so you plug it in it uses like a 3.5 mil audio jack effectively um, which plugs directly into the light itself and uh, you just go about setting up so um, middle button will give you your main menu so you have a manual mode which you can select um, and this is kind of just for like immediate that's not uh, like a program as such that's just if you need to quickly view it or something um, you have your programs mode set is what pro so programs is where you set up your programs there's a f up to four options I believe and then mode set is selecting the actual program that you want for example so whatever one it is that you've you've created you just set it to that and then the settings just time date and display like display time off and stuff like that so like so so initial feedback on the controller itself um, it uses like heat sensitivity from your thumb I guess kind of like what a, a touchscreen phone would um, it's it's not the most effective but it does work but as you see sometimes you have to kind of click more than once but it does the job it's fine um, I have had issues with this in the past where for some reason out of nowhere it just wouldn't work anymore it was set to a, a certain program but the light wasn't displaying what the program was set to um, I don't know if that's a problem with the cable but over time I kind of got lucky with just sort of wiggling the cable around and eventually it, it made a decent connection and it was working with the program that I had set so this is actually the first time I've really touched it since then because it's kind of once it's set I don't really need to touch it anymore but um, as I say just giving you some feedback of, of my thoughts and stuff of it as we go along. Um, but setting a program up is really simple so I'll show you my program so this is what I have so um, may not be the best way of doing it there's there's obviously different ways that you can program this light but this is what I've found has worked for me um, I don't use all of the the individual dots this is kind of like time marks the amount of uh, adjustments that you can have throughout the program so um, at 7.55 if we click here it will show that it's off so it's dark still 7:55 a.m. then at 8 a.m. so using the arrows going left and right 5% white 40% blue now one thing that does bug me a little bit because this is only a 125 litre tank that this is on and it is quite a powerful light 5% white is still very white um, see so yeah, I kind of wish that you could in the, the five percent and below you could find and fine tune it by a single percent maybe um but yeah five percent white forty percent blue eleven forty five so we stick at the five percent and then the, the blue goes up a bit more for the intensity throughout the day and then five o'clock in the evening white goes off completely so it's pure blue and then at nine o'clock it's lights out and it all goes dark and then the final one i don't use I find for some reason I don't know if I was doing it wrong but when I set it up originally I had done this dot as well for the lights off time but for some reason the lights were coming back on again at like two o'clock in the morning which was strange I worked out that by leaving this one empty and, and kind of doing it like that so just using sort of four markers you have your off here and off at the end and using the four in the middle sort of work fine for me um, so that's my program but I'll, I'll give you an example as well just to set a program up so it's nice and simple so this is what you'll look at um, so you can move along to the various dots where you want your program to start 
you select it press select again and you can edit the time so up and down select select and then you can choose your percentages of what you want color wise for example or what what diodes of the light you want to use um, and select again then I believe no then you press back so that's that first dot done then you go right and you can select again and you can do your time so whatever time again and you go obviously up in time it's 24 hour as well so just sort of work your way up um, four o'clock for example um, and then again once you've done that back um, so let's do let's just change this quickly for example and then if we did six o'clock and then you could do your lights out I normally have my lights out sort of half eight, nine o'clock ish. Um, I work quite long hours, so it's nice to actually have the tank on for a while um, when I get home and get to see it. And there you go. That's obviously that's really rough, but that will give you just an idea of the program you've then created and what will happen. And then you literally just go down to save, save that. I'm not going to because I don't need it. And then once you've saved it, it will then appear here under your created timer or your created program, sorry. Select your program. On here, so select the program that you've just created. And that is it. It's nice and easy, and then that's the display that you get, so it shows you a quick set what program it is you've got running um, at the current period of time, so you can see today's date, time, and then uh, the percentage of where in the program it is, so it's obviously on its way back down now, so for the evening we've got no white and 55% blue at the moment. And that is literally it as far as programming, it's nice and simple, and then once it's done, you just kind of stick it wherever you want it and leave it to do its thing. And then this is the tank. So this is the bedroom tank. Just an extra one. I've got my Reefer 300 XL downstairs, which I showed in the other video. Um, and then this one just for in the bedroom. It's got a really cheap, really annoying, loud power head that's just buzzing. Does my head in. Um, and it runs just on an all pond solutions. This is the EFX Plus with built in UV. 2,000 litre an hour filter on a 125 litre tank keeps the, keeps the uh, water crystal clear so that's nice all I've got in here is my copper band butterfly fish which is eating like an absolute beast now which I love um, two clowns there is a mandarin goby somewhere in there uh, tricolour bubble tip and enemies the non stop splitting and growing started with two Went down to one, because one got sucked into the filter, but luckily nothing happened. That one then got massive and split, and I've got five now. Um, some Kenya trees, some pulsing xenia, a few loose mushrooms, there's passion fruit mushrooms and red ones. There's a blue one somewhere, but big toadstools. This toadstool is massive. The video doesn't do it justice, but it's bigger than my hand. It's huge. And then all the babies that it won't stop giving me so that's the tank itself and then you have the light the camera is not going to focus on that but that's the light with the bracket built in fan in the top so when you get it if you don't get it with the timer you have the manual controls on the front which um, I think go up in 20% increments so you can fine tune it a lot better with the um, timer but 
As I said, I still wish that you could make white a little bit less, but built-in fan, manual controls in the top, never gets hot. The the Obviously, the, the bulb parts are warm, but they're not by any means hot, and the fan does a good job. Um, it very rarely comes on, to be honest, and when it does, it's nice and quiet. Um, and, yeah, adjustable bracket that you can move in and out. Um, I think size-wise, it's probably comparable to an AI, maybe a Hydra 26. Um, it has got a bit of weight to it, so depending on the thickness of glass of the tank that you're putting on it, you might just want to consider that with obviously the weight leaning forwards, um, putting pressure on the glass pivot in there like that. But um, I've actually got, just to be extra safe, a piece of string with it kind of attached to the wall, just so it's not putting too much tension on the glass and pulling forwards or anything, because um, it is technically just a tropical tank that I've got running as a reef tank so the glass isn't the thickest. So that is about it for this one. Um, I hope some people find that helpful and you get the information that you need if uh, you're considering this light or um, have the light and needed a bit of help with the controls or, or anything along those lines. So um, fingers crossed that'll be useful to some people. So um, I do recommend the light overall. It is good. It's it's a very powerful light. Um, it does everything I need it to. Um, I do think coloration of corals longer term. I do get a bit better coloration from my um, AI lights that I run on my reefer. Um, but for the, for what it is, for the power of the light that you get for something of that size. Um, and, and for what it does do, the performance you get from it, for the price, I don't think anyone can complain really. It's it's a good quality light. Um, out of the the sort of the Chinese black box lights that are available, this is one that I find that's done the job perfectly. Um, I've gotten well with Nikro for quite a long time. I was actually given this light as um, sort of part of a sponsorship from Nikro quite a while ago. Um, but I'll always be sort of completely honest with, with my feedback and stuff like that. And if I hadn't have been given it, I would consider buying it. Um, I think it is a decent light, so it's, it's something that's worth taking into consideration. Um, especially if you kind of look into to do the whole reefing on a budget situation. Um, that, that was kind of what always got me into it. I always had the, the kind of mindset when I was um, into tropical fish that reef tanks were kind of unobtainable because they were so expensive um and don't get me wrong once the kind of you got the bug and and the addiction that inevitably comes with it it's always going to be expensive but it is possible to do a reef tank on a budget and not spend an absolute fortune um you can get all the relevant equipment at kind of quite reasonable prices um the the, the filter that I used, for example, that brand new was, I think, 140 quid. Um, I think these lights are similar sort of money, 140, 150 quid. Um, I use a Bubble Magus QQ1 hang on back skimmer, that was about 100 quid. Um, coral fish and stuff like that, you kind of just get as you go along, and, and as and when you're ready, you slowly add to it and you do what you want. Um, so yeah, I think um, it's definitely worth considering and, and I hope this video has been helpful to people that are considering the light or got any questions or anything like that. Um, appreciate any feedback or if anyone's got any more questions that I can help with or, or anything along those lines. Um, as I said in my previous video, I am going to be doing some more um, like how-to videos with the Sally Furt test kits and stuff like that in the near future, but it's just trying to find the time to be able to stop and, and film everything. Um, but yeah, that'll be it for today. I hope everyone is okay and enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if it's been helpful. And I'll see you in the next one.